the snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Let's assemble our ridge beam. To make the 2.3 meter long ridge beam, we'll need the left piece, which is a 97 BLR, the right piece, which is another 97 BLR, the joiner, which is called a ZASP, and then we'll need eight tech screws with neoprene washers. The first step is to remove the protective film that covers the capping of the ridge beam pieces. Take both ridge beam pieces and make sure you have them orientated the way shown and then turn them over. Slide the capping of one under the other and then push them together until the hat sections are flush. Place the ZASP into the underside making sure that it's centered. Then turn the beam back over. We need to fix both halves of the beam to the ZASP using eight tech screws. Make a mark 10mm from the top cap as shown. Then make three more marks 50mm apart. Then mark the four on the other side. That's all eight. Now get the tech screws with the neoprene washers. Be careful not to over tighten and break the washer like this. Secure both halves of the splice ridge beam to the ZASP with eight tech screws with neoprene washers. Let's do the rear panel assembly. To construct the rear panel we'll need 154B channel, 181D channel, two 30A sheets and one 31A sheet. Start by laying out your sheet so that the 30A sheets are on either side of the 31A sheet. Make sure the side of the 30A sheets, which has the holes on top, overlaps with the matching holes in the 31A sheet. Overlap these sheets by one rib and then secure with four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Take the 54B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. Ensure that the short side of the channel goes to the outside of the panel. Take the 81D channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets.
Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the CSJ and channel together. Repeat this for the top channel, securing the CSJ and channel with two 10mm self-tapping screws. That completes our rear panel assembly. Let's do the roof panel assembly. To construct the roof panel we'll need one 60B channel, one 81C channel, two 86A lips and three of the 49A sheets. Lay out the sheets so that the holes at one end are all in the same orientation to the bottom. Overlap the sheets by one rib and then secure with eight of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 60B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets. This should be the edge that doesn't have the row of holes along it. Make sure that the short side of the channel faces towards the outside of the panel. Take the 81C channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Remember to put the short side of the channel to the outside of the panel. Fasten the channel and the CSJ with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now attach the 86A lip to the side of the sheets, sliding it between the sheet and the channels. Once it's in place, secure with three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the remaining 86A lip and slide it between the sheet and the channels on the other side. Once it's in position, secure with three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat all these steps again to make the other roof panel, they're exactly the same. Time for the side panel assembly. To make the side panel we'll need one peak brace, one 83L channel, one 83R channel, one 81C channel, one 36L sheet, one 42D sheet, and one 36R sheet. Begin by laying out the sheets so that they're in the following order from left to right. 36L sheet, 42D sheet, and then the 36R sheet. Overlap the sheets by one rib and then secure all the sheets with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 83R channel and attach it to the top right of these sheets. Make sure that the short side of the channel is facing towards the outside of the panel. Take the 83L channel and attach it to the top left of the sheets. The channels will need to meet in the middle of the panel.
place the peak brace over the pre-punched holes in the top of the channels. Secure the peak brace with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 81C channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Secure the channel and CSJ using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat all these steps for the other side panel. They're both exactly the same. Time to start the front panel assembly. To construct the front panel, we'll need one 89A jam, one 89B jam, one 90B jam, one 54A channel, one 54C channel, one 79B channel, and two 32A sheets. Place the two 32A sheets so their narrow pans are in the centre of the panel. Leave a gap the width of a sheet between them. This will become the doorway. Attach the 54A channel to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will face the outside of the shed. Make sure the corner hole in the sheet aligns with the outer centre hole in the channel. Repeat this process for the other sheet. Make sure the corner hole of the sheet aligns with the outer centre hole in the channel. Attach the 54C channel to the bottom of the sheets. The holes in the sheet and the channel will need to align the same as they did at the top. Take the 89A jam and slide it between the top and bottom channels. Once slotted in, make sure that it overlaps the sheet and the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the jam to the channels and the sheet. Secure the ends first and then do the center holes. Take the 89B jam and repeat the process for the other side, sliding it between the channels and the sheet. Once slotted in, make sure that it overlaps the sheet and the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the jam to the channels and the sheet. Secure the ends first and then do the center holes. Place the 90B jam at the top of the doorway. The notches in the 90B jam will slide over the 89A and 89B jams. Make sure the holes are aligned and the jam is placed correctly. Then use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten the jam to the channel. Using the 3mm drill bit, drill out the two holes in the center of the channel. Fasten the channel to the CSJ using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now at the bottom of the doorway, place the 79B channel into the 54C channel. Make sure the short side of the 79B channel is sitting to the outside and that the holes align. Fasten the channels together using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. 
Use the 3 mil drill bit to clear out the center hole in the 79B channel, and then fasten using one of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. It's time to flip the sheet over. We recommend you get a friend to help you with this. We'll secure the jam at the top by screwing two of the 10 mil self-tapping screws into the corners. Take the 3 mil drill bit and drill out the center holes in the channel. Secure the channel using two of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the bottom of the doorway using two of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Use the 3 mil drill bit to drill out the center holes in the channel. Fasten the channel using two of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. That will complete our front panel assembly. We'll construct our door panel next. To construct the door panel, we'll need one pad bolt, one door plate, 158A channel, 158B channel, 258C channels, 291A jams, and the B sheet. Start by orientating your sheet. We have ours orientated so the holes for the lock are on the left side of the screen. Take one of the 58C channels and attach it to the top of the panel using the snap type method. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, attaching it to the bottom of the sheet. Next, take the 58A channel, it's the one with the hinges. Attach it to the right side of the panel. For this channel, we'll need the long side of the channel facing outside. Slide it underneath the 58C channels at the top and bottom. You'll know you've got the channel in the right position if the hinges fold upwards. Repeat this for the 58B channel. Remember to put the long side of the channel facing towards the outside. Now that the channels are on, secure the corners using four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Now that that's done, do the remaining holes in the channel using six more screws. Make sure they align with the holes in the sheet underneath it. Flip the panel over and use four more screws to secure the back of the channels. While our panel is turned over, we'll attach the door bracing. Take one of the 91A jams and align its holes with a diagonal row of holes in the sheet. Both ends of the jam will slide underneath the channels. Once aligned, use a screw at either end of the jam. Do this from the underside of the sheet. This will hold our jam in place so we can flip the sheet over and more easily do the rest of the screws. Repeat this process for the other jam, ensuring it's aligned with the diagonal row of punched holes. Now that the jams are held in place, flip the panel over again and use six screws to finish securing the jams to the sheet. Next, we'll need the door plate. Place it over the holes on the left side of the sheet. 
Once aligned, fasten using two screws into the holes furthest from the edge. Get the pad bolt and place on the door plate. Align the four holes and then fasten with four 10mm self-tapping screws. With our door panel complete, it's time to attach it to the front panel. Place the front panel so you have access to the holes for the hinges. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear the sheeting that sits behind these holes. Place the door panel over the front panel in the open position and unfold the hinges. Make sure that these align with the holes in the front panel. Once aligned, use a pop riveter to fasten the door hinges to the front panel. You'll need to use six pop rivets to secure the door. Test your door opens and closes smoothly. We've now finished our door panel and attached it to the front panel. Time for the final assembly. Stand up the rear panel or get a friend to hold it. We'll start by attaching the right side panel. Slide the top and bottom channels of the right side panel into the notches in the rear panel. Once the pre-punched holes are aligned, fasten using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the left side panel, making sure that the holes at the front are aligned. Once aligned, fasten the sheets together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now we'll attach the front panel. We recommend you get a friend to help you hold it. Align the front panel with the left panel, slotting the channels together and making sure that the holes line up. Once aligned, fasten the two panels together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side, aligning the panels, then fastening with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the ridge beam to one of the roof panels. Orientate them both as shown. Make sure that the side with the 60B channel goes into the ridge beam.
Secure the panel to the ridge beam using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the roof panel with the ridge beam attached to it and lift it onto the shed. Get a friend to help you place it onto the shed and make sure that the lips are on the outside of the side walls. Align the ridge beam with the holes in the peak brace. Fasten the ridge beam to the peak brace by using a 10mm self-tapping screw at either end. Use one 10mm self-tapping screw to hold the lip to the side wall. Don't fasten all the holes as we'll want them loose to get the next roof panel in. Repeat for the other side using one of the 10mm self-tapping screws to hold the lip to the side wall. Place the remaining roof panel onto the top of the shed, sliding it so that the lips are on the outside. Pull the edge of the roof panel and slide it into the ridge beam. You may need to wiggle the roof panel to get it all the way in. Fasten the ridge beam to the roof panel using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Fasten the roof sheets together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out the hole in the peak brace and ridge beam, then fasten with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat for the other end of the ridge beam, drill out and secure with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Align the corner hole in the roof with the hole in the channel, then fasten with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat this step for the other corners, and so it means you'll secure with three more 10mm self-tapping screws. Use four 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the roof panel to the rear wall. Use four 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the roof panel to the front wall. Finish securing the lips to the side panel using 10 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the gable cap and fold as shown. Hook the gable cap under the two roof panel lips and place over the ridge beam. Drill out the holes in the cap 
and then fasten using two of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Attach the remaining gable cap to the other side. Drill out through the holes in the gable cap and then fasten with two of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Place the hasp over the pad bolt shaft. Drill out both holes and secure it with two 10mm self-tapping screws. Firstly, position the shed onto the slab, making sure the walls are squared up and it's centered. Take your angle brackets and lay them out in the positions as shown, spacing them equally along each wall. Using these brackets as a template, go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall. Drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centred on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the Dyna bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the Dyna bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the Dyna bolt with a shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored. Now the shed is complete, any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw.